Good morning, everyone. Muy buenos días a todos. Buenos días. On behalf of the Kane University Board of Trustees, we welcome you to Kane University. Now, immediately following this event, there will be a reception held at the new building uh, by Liberty Hall. Uh, there will be shuttle buses to help you get there, so uh, please join us. And now I have the pleasure of introducing the president of Kane University, Dr. Dawood Farahi. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. 
Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair, for that introduction. The university continues to grow in prestige because of your leadership in the support of the Board of Trustees, in the support of the friends that are here, in the donations and generosity of many of our donors and friends here at King University. Before I begin, I would like to recognize some special guests who are here with us today. Trustee Dave Gibbons, two-time two -time graduate of King University, the mayor of my hometown, Chris Bulwidge. <laughs> Mr. John Kane, WKU and Liberty Hall Board of Trustees. Ms. Joan Verplank, Wenzhou Kane University Board of Trustees. Ed Esposito, the President of Kane Alumni Association, and many of his colleagues. And Dr. Manny Mac Maggie McManaman, President of Union County College, with some of her colleagues. So thank you all for being here today. And thank you very much for that applause and that encouragement. I welcome each and each and each one of you here today as we start the new academic year. This is the time of the year that we look forward to work and we're filled with excitement as we prepare for a new academic year and the great students that are coming to this university this year. Today we welcome new faces, new attitudes, new perspectives to our very diverse campus. We prepare for lively discussions in the classroom and outside. We reflect on the task of preparing students for careers that may not yet exist in our fast-changing economy here in America and across the world. And we consider what it means to be the agents of change. Changing the status quo is an obligation that we all have. Staying put does not work. Changing expectation of how far any one of our students can go we must do. And by doing so, we will change their lives and we will guarantee their success. <clears throat> Many of you probably don't recall, but some of you do, where we were 15 years ago, where we are today, where our students were 15 years ago, and where they are today. Some time ago, we established, that was about 11 years ago, a blueprint for all we wanted to accomplish here at Kane University for our students. We called it Vision 2020, and it was an ambition project in every way. It required all of us to think outside the box to work outside the lines and to push ourselves harder than we have ever pushed ourselves before. We challenged ourselves and we focused on the students. Attract great students was the other focus. Instruct those students at the highest level of education globalize our curriculum in our campus, expand our partnerships, grow our footprint not only in New Jersey in two different locations, but also 9,000 miles across the world in China, support development and instruction of new techniques, protect our community, innovate in academics and technology, and foster a community that embraces equity 
in inclusivity. Today, I am tremendously proud to stand here before you and tell you that together, not only we have accomplished most of our goals, we have achieved them beyond our expectations. Let us, let us start w focusing on our undergraduate and graduate programs. Kane Cougars do climb hires. Take the Capucha family. Mr. Mayor, they're from Elizabeth. They live on Elizabeth Avenue. They're first generation American. They're first in their family to get a college degree. And look at what Kane did for them. Do we have a video? You have all accomplished the impossible in your own way. You have defied the odds. I come from a family where we're first generation Italian American. My dad always said the most important thing is always keep your word. You start school, finish what you started. Finish that degree, finish that class. And my mom always says, pazienza e costanza, patience and consistency. In the beginning, it was very difficult. I left everything behind. You get here and you see it's a different world altogether. But I went back to Italy, I met my wife, I brought her over here and then we started a family. It's a challenge because the society is different. To try to keep tradition from the past, innovation for the future. Let them understand that it's not just money, they are able to have a focus in life. As a child, I always knew I liked science. In high school, I started volunteering in the hospital. When I came to Kane University, the opportunities just kind of expanded, and I realized this was definitely my passion. I wanted to be a doctor because I was so passionate about the science behind it. Dr. Beatrice Capucha. I'm very passionate about music, and my parents were the ones that suggested to join a music program. The teacher that I studied piano with, she had always told me that, you know, you should go into teaching. I ended up coming to Kane because they're leading with their education programs, and they have a very strong music department, so it was the perfect fit. Go to college is very hard, so the scholarship helps a lot. They take a weight away from you. I had no idea that this young woman that was going to be my mentee was going to turn out to be a medical doctor. I'm so very proud of her. The mentor, I believe, isn't the person who gives you all the answers. They're the person who guides you through the difficult questions and helps you learn how to think. Anne is the person that I call to for everything. Any part of my professional career that I need help with, any personal part of my life that I need help with, I know that I can call her. It was definitely a village that was helping to get this young woman through college. And then her younger sister wanted to go to college. She too excelled. Scholarships helped a lot, that's for sure, because I would not have been able to study nearly as much if I had to focus on also paying for college or potentially stacking up a debt. And if you add work into that, we're talking about an 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. day. It would have been beyond difficult, and I highly doubt I would have been able to accomplish what I did in four years. I tell my kids, whatever they received from the scholarship, they have to give it back. And somehow help other people the same help that they got. You have to work very hard if you want something in life. And actually, they are doing that, and that's why I'm very proud of them, and they are where they are right now. <laughs> if that doesn't bring a few tears to your eyes, very few things may. Beatrice became a medical doctor, and Tiziana, affectionately called Tizzy, was the valedictorian last year during the graduation of Kane University. We have hundreds. The generosity of support and support of donors like Anne Evan Esterbrook, who helped this family realize their dream, and there are many of you and hundreds of other donors 
that have done the same thing for hundreds and hundreds of students here at King. There is also Meteor Mike, a two-time King alumnus and adjunct professor here, who some of you may know from TV news. Mike Rizzo is a weather anchor for News 12 in the Bronx in Brooklyn, and he's also a New York Emmy winner. Then there are these amazing four women from the mathematics department. These four recent graduates last year, a diverse group of young women who are succeeding beyond all expectations. Women and minorities are often told that studying STEM is not their department and they should stay away from it. So they do not take that challenge. But at Kane, we tell them you can achieve anything you wish. These four women were encouraged and mentored. Each was accepted into prestigious graduate schools to continue their mathematics education, all with full scholarships. One of them, Alexandra Vasconez, received nine scholarship offers to, uh, to pursue a PhD. She is now enrolled in the University of Delaware doctorate program. Congratulations, Alexandra, and congratulations, Dr. Louis Bogris and the math program for doing such a great job. Any sports fans here? Well, I see some of them in here. They've been here for two weeks and practicing from day in and day out, before the sun rises and way after the sun sets, right? Right or wrong? There you go. And one of them, Francisco Reyes graduated last year with a communication degree in May from Kane University. He learned how to be a leader as president of the student organization. Now he is one of 21 recent graduates of prestigious universities in America to be accepted in ESPN Next. Francisco is already the production assistant for ESPN's ESPN's top-rated morning show. And if we are talking about sports, I have to acknowledge all of these smiling faces, kind of sleepy smiling faces, that are here. They've been here for weeks. You ready? They're here not because they're good athletes. They are. They're also here because they're amazingly successful scholars as well. Take a look. We are a family. Over 400 brothers and sisters strong. It takes a certain type to be a part of this. Those willing to pick each other up to fight for every yard. To go the extra mile. This, this is Cougar, Cougar Culture. Culture. Are you ready? You, you better, better be. be. And then there's the Almora Little League, the Almora Troopers. Well, the mayor of Elizabeth is going around here, says, my city, my troopers, I was there. I sat in those chairs and watched these kids. But I said, Mr. Mayor, 
their coach is a graduate of King. They captured the hearts of almost everybody in New Jersey. Even my friend Dave Gibbons was watching that when he was interviewing me for a particular reason. They're up, they're up, they're up. Well, they may not have gotten the trophy, but they gave it an amazing fight. Coach Labrador's speech to his players after their final loss went viral. And if you haven't seen it, you should Google it. Try not to get choked up. No. He told the kids this, and this is the motto of many of our athletic teams. He said, I love the way we didn't give up. We fought, we fought, and we fought. Congratulations to the Almora Little League, and congratulations to our own Mr. Labrador. If your students succeed, your university succeed. If they are distinguished, it brings distinction to your university. Last year, we celebrated the graduation of our first Doctor of Physical Therapy students. These students, 60, 600 of them, applied for 25 spots. And 24 out of 25 graduated on time. <laughs> Many Kane architecture graduates were accepted into prestigious graduate programs across the country, testimony to the quality of education here at Kane. Even more telling is that many of them chose to go for their master's degree right here at Kane because they know a great education. They did experience it here at Kane. They will be part of the first cohort of graduate architecture students here at Kane. Now, when it comes to attracting students, Kane continues to excel. Last year, from this stage, I told you about the launch of our Centennial Scholarship Program, an initiative designed to provide high-achieving students with limited financial capability access to world-class education. Today, I am proud to tell you that we accepted 54 students in that group who pay absolutely no tuition as part of the Centennial Scholars programs. Some of those students and their parents are here today. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> we said we will help these students and that's exactly what we did. These students are very close to my heart. I was one of them 35 years ago. I had some talent, but virtually no money. For this particular program in the last 18 months, listen to this. We have collected $17 million for an endowment that would last a century. In 18 months, in 18 months, the donors and the friends of the university understood that when you have it, you should give some of it. When you reach your goal, you should help somebody else reach theirs. And they did. And with the support of the board in the matching fund. This program, fully loaded after four years, will have 300 students that will have these scholarships for a century. That is what King University does, and that's what generosity is all about. 
thank you for all the donors and scholars who participated in this program. We're also set this year to welcome one of our biggest freshman classes again. Thanks to the work of Enrollment Services, Student Affairs, and many faculty and others who brought in more students than we can accommodate in the two freshman hall. Those two freshman residential facilities are 100% full. Not a single bed available in any one of those two. These students come from 21 counties here in New Jersey, 13 other states across the US, and 13 countries across the globe. But perhaps more importantly, admission tells me that this particular class is the best academically prepared class we've ever had. I'm excited about that. And I'm sure you will be. We also welcome a stellar new group of faculty to Kane University this fall. 46 new faculty members for Kane USA. And And they are here. Let's give them a round of applause. Just in case you were interested, we also hired 49 new faculty at Wen Joe Kane and 91 staff members here at Kane USA in Wen Joe. And as a matter of fact, just for the record, in case you don't forget, in the last five years, we will have hired 511 full-time faculty at Kane USA in Winjo Kane, the largest number of any of our peer universities, double. <laughs> and our faculty also distinguished themselves. One of them, the executive director of the computer science program, Professor Patricia Moriel, was named, <laughs> listen to this, was named a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences, the most prestigious association in the country. She was elected for exceptional leadership in service to advanced diversity in computing. I can think of no better reason to be recognized by such a distinguished organization, which also noted, <coughs> excuse me, that Dr. Moriel's contribution to scholarly research and gave her $1.7 million grant to help Kane University. Another one, Professor Lane Rick from Michael Graves College received the Gabriel Prize, a grant from Western European Architecture Foundation. This is a truly international achievement that brings distinction both to Lane and to the Michael Graves College. Our congratulations our congratulations to all that helped in achieving this distinction. We also have some new faces. This year, we welcome Dr. Jen Wang as the new Dean of the College of Business and Public Management. Dr. Wang is a Fulbright Scholar and comes to Kane from Drury University in Springfield, Missouri and he will get his own building sometime next year. Are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> and one of the plans we had is to put the position assistant program in place. 
The first time we did not succeed, but we will try again. And now I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Carol Biscardi, the new director of the Physician Assistant Program. Carol, are you there? In the provost office, Dr. Jeffrey Tony is taking a new role of leadership at the university, focusing on research and faculty development. He just came from a visiting professorship at MIT and has brought with him a whole bunch of ideas. We know, we know that for a fact, and that applies to you kids too, that students who participate in research with faculty have a five-year graduation of 92%. See that number? 92%. And last year, 1,500 students from here and Quinn Joe King participated in that program. And I told the provost it better be 2,000 next spring. Dr. Susan Bousquet, who was the Associate Provost, is now stepping up to the Cabinet as Vice President for Academic Affairs. She will oversee all of our colleges and will be in charge of watching the deans. She seems a little happy to be watching the deans. But that crew is not easy to find. They're all over the map. Did you find one of them? Oh, oh there, George Chang, yeah. That, Cause you live here, George. <laughs> one of the key goals of Vision 2020 was to create a new model of a global university. And boy, did we do that. At WKU, dozens of, and WKU, in dozens of other locations across the world, we have internship locations that would benefit all of you. You may not realize just how fast the Winjo Kane campus is growing. Mr. Mayor, Dave, you can get on a plane, go over the North Pole, and land in Wenzhou in 14 hours. Did you know that? <laughs> oh, you could start. And you, both of you are invited. If you haven't been to Wenzhou, Kane, you should go. And here's the thing. There's no change in tuition and fees. And the university in the Sobel Family Foundation will provide $2,000 to every student with a 3.0 GPA that wants to go to Winchell Kane for a semester. $1,500 for your trip and $500 for you to see the Great Wall of China or Shanghai, usually referred to as New York City on steroids. <laughs> this year at Winchell Kane, we're taking 800 new freshman students. And in 2020, that number would reach 1,000. Today, we have 2,400 students in Wenzhou Kane, the largest American university in China, and our two competitors, NYU and Duke, are totally stunned of how we did it. And more and more of our students go to China. Just imagine you go to an employer and somebody says, do you have any experience? Like, cross, did you ever cross the Delaware or went over the Drexel Bridge? And you say, I was in China for a semester. That does make a difference. China is the second largest economy in the world. And if you haven't been to Walmart, you're lying to me. <laughs> but when you have been to Walmart, pick up anything you buy, look at the bottom, 
and see if it says made in Arkansas. It doesn't. It says made in China. One of our students created his own video of his experience in China. Take a look. Here's something you might want to remember. Tomorrow, 186 Winjo Kane students will arrive on this campus for a semester at Kane USA. Their participation in the classroom and at campus events will benefit all of us. This is truly a cross-cultural alliance and so many of you have contributed to its success. Our athletic teams have been to China, and our soccer team actually won two out of the three games in China. We should be extremely proud of this relationship we have. And then there's one other thing. All the students in China that come here, they pay cash. Absolutely no financial aid on our side. Good business proposition. <laughs> the campus at WKU continues to grow. So far, the investment has been over 1.3 billion RMBs, and it continues. The architecture building that you see over there will be finished in June of 2020. Dean David Money, Sue, what is your Dean Money? <laughs> From Michael Graves College has played a key role in development of Winjil Kane campus. As of this summer, Winjil Kane is a candidate for accreditation of the National Architectural Board, which is a great achievement. Thank you, David, in China. And our success in China is getting noticed here at home. This year, we expanded our partnership on local and global scale by establishing an international sister school program between K through 12 schools in New Jersey in China with focus on STEM programming. Dean Keith Bostian worked with the educational programs here and took those people to China. And now we have 21 districts linked up between the two countries. When we envisioned our path to 2020, we definitely envisioned growth both as a multi-campus institution and back here at the main campus of Kane University. You've seen what we have done. You've seen the facilities that we have. Just for you kids, your Harwood Arena facility and your athletic facilities are not undoubtedly, definitely the best Division 
three facilities in the state of New Jersey. And that is a fact. And I even got you new buses, didn't I? <laughs> 10 years ago, we created the Skyland, pro uh, the Cane Ocean program in Tom's River. We have 1,450 students, I'm told, in that program. This fall, we will open another campus in the skylands of New Jersey, way up in the Northwest. Originally envisioned to be a living laboratory for Kane students, the plan for the skyland grew to accommodate the needs of students in the Northwestern section of the state and it will continue to grow, offering baccalaureate completion degrees for the community colleges in the surrounding areas. Have you seen the Skylands campus? Have you? Some of you have, huh? It is located inside a 1,200-acre pristine state park. But don't take my word for it. Take a look at it at a description by a student. I'm excited for new students to see the Kane Skylands campus. It is a modern facility located in a place that is so natural and remote, it is hard to believe you're still in New Jersey. The Kane Skylands campus is only one hour's drive from Kane's main campus in Union. It does everybody a great service to be able to escape from the constant pressure that urbanization brings to us and to be able to really breathe in fresh air. No matter what your major is, we could all be inspired by being surrounded by nature. McCain University has always been a transfer-friendly university. This campus continues on that mission. We are building partnerships with community colleges in the local area to recruit their students that are completing their associate's degree. So those credits can transfer seamlessly into Kane University so they can get that world-class public education in their own backyard. There's so much that happens when you get out there amongst the beautiful scenery, up on the canopy walk, and in a new environment. Uh. Kids, that canopy walk is not available for bungee jumping. It actually is above the tree line, and it is beautifully done. Thank you, Felice. We're also expanding the Myron Center. You've seen it, right? That dingy little section, it's getting fixed. The learning commons at the library where you don't have enough room to sit and they close at 11 o'clock, that will be no longer the case. We'll add to it. Research facilities that are not available for the sciences will be added to support research here at Kane. We envisioned a bustling university boulevard one day, Envision 2020. And if you look across Morris Avenue from the Green Lane building, have you done that? You can see a university town well on its way, complete with a restaurant row, not a good thing for Cougars Den, <laughs> retail parks, like buy stuff you don't need, right? townhouses, 32 units of faculty housing, the beautiful Heinz Hall. This development is the fulfillment of a university town that will keep you on campus and away from Route 22. <laughs> Take a look.
I'm hoping that Felice can get this done by June. <laughs> or she will be working over at Skylands watching the skywalk. <laughs> to make that kind of growth possible, we're constantly looking for new sources of revenue and support. You'll see the fruits of that work soon when the brand new Heinz Hall will open across Morris Avenue. Any business majors? There are some there, huh? Construction is moving forward, and I'm assuming that it will get done by June, correct? For this goes like this. At Kane University Foundation, we have another young CEO that is now becoming a star. Where's Bill Miller? Are you around? Where is he? Someplace there? He, he was chosen by New Jersey Biz as the 40 under 40 mover and shakers in the state. So Bill starts shaking the tree and bring some scholarship money. <laughs> As we build our campus, we are very much aware of the need to ensure that it is the safest environment it could possibly be. There's Gunny over there. Under police director Mark Farsi's leadership, we maintain a high standard for our officers in our community. Our vigilance has paid off as Kane has been named one of the safest campuses in America, not in New Jersey, in America by SafeWise and the National Council for Home Safety and Security. Thank you for Mr. Farsi, and thank you officers and security guards and public safety assistants that are mostly students. We're doing more than making this campus a safe place to live and study. We also are making it more convenient as we add new technology to the way we serve our students. This weekend, more than 1,800 students will move into our residence halls, and we're ready to welcome them with some new tools. Our new housing software system lets you apply for housing online and select your roommates online. And in our, in our new Get Mobile application is putting meal plan management right on your fingertips. Two different ways. One, you would know exactly how much money you got. Number two, the same application will send, will send an email to your parents to add more money. <laughs> they may not like it, but you will. This fall, we also will debut several new technologies designed to advance student services, enhance faculty and support staff connectivity, and streamline human resource recruitment. Student recruitment also has a new technology assistant, meet Alexis cousin, Rory. Rory, there you go. This, he is our new chat bot. He's on cane.edu, in case you didn't know. And enrollment services people tell me they'll answer any question the prospective students may have. Let me see if Rory really has a brain. Rory, what is the best thing about Kane University? Get serious. Try again. Next. 
what is the best Anasi? That is the good one. We, <coughs> at Kane, oh, there you go. I don't need to tell you that we are one of the five most diverse universities in America. You already know that. Be certain that we don't stop there. At Kane, we continue to foster an environment where everybody feels welcome, regardless of any preference or race, gender, or national origin. And community service is provided to all of them across the globe as well. This past year, the Human Rights Institute sent groups of students to Costa Rica and Puerto Rico for service learning trips. We also continue to bring diverse viewpoints to campus. From Chelsea Clinton to Bob Woodward, the Distinguished Lecture Series brings us some of the most influential voices and perspectives from US and beyond. This year, we have a powerhouse lineup for you prepared, which will start on October the 28th with Samantha Power, the former United States Ambassador to the United Nations under President Obama. Power is recognized internationally as a tireless crusader for US foreign policy, as well as human rights and democracy. Her lecture will certainly engage you. Future speakers of that series will include political strategist David Axelrod, civil rights advocate Martin Luther King III, and futurist Jimmy Metzl. The annual Human Rights Conference is going on its 13th year. Last year, we hosted food activist and TV's top chef Tom Colecchio, along with the moderator, our own Mayor Bulwich. This year, the conference will focus on voting rights. It's an important, <laughs> it's an important topic, and you kids, if you haven't registered, please do so. Your vote does count. All of these events challenge our students to reevaluate their worldview and develop their own guiding principle on important issues. This is what a college education should be all about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have accomplished a great deal. Let's stop for a moment and give ourselves a round of applause. But you probably guess what I'm going to say next, do you? We can celebrate the success of Vision 2020, but it is equally important to look forward. Dr. Bousquet soon will be calling on all of you and other stakeholders and community members to begin work on the new strategic plan for the next 10 years. We must never stop improving. Good enough is never good enough for King University. We have already started some critical work to move forward in the 20 Century, the 21st century's second half. Professional experience is key to landing a job. And we are determined to provide each of our students with high quality experience before they graduate. No other university in our peer group can make that claim. Kane is partnering with more employees to bring internship opportunities 
to our students. And each and single one of you should take advantage of these opportunities. Beginning this fall, every undergraduate academic program at Kane will offer at least one three-credit internship course as part of the curriculum. To make it happen, our career services team under the direction of Vice President Felice Vasquez is expanding our network of participating business and public agencies every single day. And we're grateful for all the hard work that they do. And we also appreciate those of you who could connect us with businesses that will take our students as interns. Our supplemental instructional program is also expanding in a big way. Please listen to this. This program provides extra instruction in courses identified as challenging for our students. It is taught by our own high-performing students, your own age bracket, the people you know, and the faces you've seen. Many of them are here today. Let's thank him for their hard work. <laughs> Last year, more than 200 of our students participated in this program, and it has shown amazing results. In our first year, students who attended this program saw a 38% in average increase in their final fourth grade, in their final course grade, my apologies compared to those who did not. And course withdrawals significantly decreased. In the fall semester, students in 55 sections will have supplemental instruction support for their courses. The National Science Foundation is helping us make it happen as part of the $1.7 million grant that I told you about. Thank you, Patricia Morial. Then there's our new first-gen scholars programs. Some of them are here. They're also fostering success. It pairs first-generation students with alumni mentors to help guide the students through their transition to college and their professional paths. So far, we have 50 at least 50 signed up for this program, and I hope you consider signing up for it. We take care of our students at Kane in many creative and innovative ways. This past year, the Kane Hunger Task Force, a partnership among various campus groups, spearheaded the opening of the Cougar Pantry to provide food for those students who need it. It is located in the Human Rights Institute, and we always appreciate donations. Our students also are going to see some changes on the campus itself when they arrive this weekend. You may have noticed that Woolis. Anybody knows Woolis? Anybody remembers Woolis Hall? Well, it finally called it quits on us last year, and this year it's gone. Replaced by a learning plaza for faculty and staff and guests who designed the plaza. Who did design the plaza? One of our own students, Hugo, Hugo Borges. We have a video from Hugo. We are on the site where Willis once stood and we're creating a new plaza. The goal of the plaza would give students a new place to spend time together with new seating areas and charging stations that will enable them to plug in and recharge into this new open environment. 
I'm a student intern for the facilities and campus planning, and they gave me and my other three partners the opportunity to help designing this project. And mine was creating a real-time render, allowing the campus planning to see a 3D model of what the open space is going to become. As an architect student, um, designing a project that is going to be built is just a truly amazing feeling. Thank you, Hugo. We call this the Learning Plaza, which you can have open air classrooms there as well. Now, right after my speech, when I'm done, it'll take a while, you will go to the Liberty Hall Academic Center and Museum. It will open because you are coming. And they tell me the food is going to be fantastic. I'm also told that the football team is not here, so the rest of you have sufficient quantities of food. <laughs> Let's take a look at the LHAC. We, we create, create a special opportunity to see and touch and feel history. Liberty Hall Academic Center at Kane University is a unique historical resource, not just for history students. The new building integrates archive space with classroom space. We incorporate original primary source research into the undergraduate curriculum by drawing on the resources that we have in our own archives and in the Liberty Hall Museum. In addition, we've got the gallery space, so we're going to be able to host special exhibits, visiting exhibitions, all kind of community-engaged events to really show how the present and the future is really engaged with the past. We have the Special Collections Research Library, which allows them access to documents, manuscripts, books, artifacts that really tell the story of our state, that tell the story of our nation, and of two very influential families, the Livingstons and the Keynes. We can all read about history, but here you can actually see it, hear it, and touch it. The way that we've integrated the classroom learning experience with a historic museum, with an archival collection and a university special collection doesn't exist anywhere else in the country. But there's something else worth telling you that despite the financial reduction in state aid, Kane University is in very strong financial position. Moody's, that's the rating agency that looked at Kane, said Kane's strong financial management has translated into continued positive operating margins and growth in flexible reserves. That's Wall Street speak, and we're doing good. <clears throat> Friends, colleagues, board members, students, and community partners, I know I have asked a lot of you during the last 15 years. I ask you to do things others say were impossible. I asked you to have courage when we tried things that were risky and other people didn't want to do it. I ask you to be humble and try to understand our primary focus, that of being the student. I ask you to be efficient, tighten up your belt, because the state funding is becoming smaller and smaller, and today, the state of New Jersey gives us 14 cents to every dollar that we spent. I ask you to abandon the ways of the past and embrace the needs of the future. I ask you to stand tall, gaze out far, dream big, and be bold. I ask you all to envision Vision 2020. And I am so proud of where we have arrived now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no reasonable person could disagree with the 
world-class learning environment we have created here at Kane. The world-class opportunities we have developed for our students. The world-class academic programs and residential facilities we have built. The high-quality new programs that we have put in place. The significant investments we have made in learning support programs that we have instituted. The hundreds of capable faculty with great teaching skills and scholarship productivity that we have hired. Our combined efforts have produced amazing results for students and brought distinction to Kane University. We are now a multi-campus regional university with a global footprint from here to China. Our reputation is moving from good to great. <laughs> it has been my honor to serve this university on its path of completing Vision 2020, but there's so much more to be done and it's time for somebody else to do some of it. I have recently advised the Board of Trustees that I will complete the last year of my presidency in 2020. And I do so confident that Kane University is transformed, it is flourishing, and it is well prepared to serve the next generation of our global leaders, our students. I have no regrets and the privilege of serving this university for 16 years has been the highest. Thank you. So, thank you. So after finishing in 2020, I want to see my grandkids, spend more time with them. But don't forget, if anybody comes close to hurting my students, I will be back. Thank you very much, and see you at Liberty Hall. Thank you, thank you. Did you ever think